This episode of JTEC Apple is brought to you by Full Sail University. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Justin here, and today I'm going to be unboxing and kind of give you a quick first look of the DJI Phantom 3. So I've been wanting a drone for quite a while, and obviously the DJI Phantom 3 is the most popular drone out there, and I was very excited to get it. Not only does it record 4K video, it has a 12 megapixel camera, and you can also have it stream live video feed directly to your tablet or smartphone. But yeah, these things aren't cheap and I'm going to try my best not to damage it or break it on my first flight, but I do have a few accessories coming for it. Um, but other than that, this is supposed to be the easiest drone to fly and really looking forward to it. So taking a look at the box, of course it says it has GPS, a video a vision positioning system, three axis stabilized camera, long range HD live view, and of course 4K video recording. I kind of did want to get the DJI Inspire one, but that was a little bit out of my price range for my first drone. So I look forward to playing around with this, but let's go ahead and open it. If I can figure out which side it opens from. And you will also be seeing some test footage later in the video as well. So just flipping open the box here, the first thing you will find is the instruction manual. Taking off this big thing. Here's just a look at what's inside the box here. There's the controller itself, but first off, there is the drone. And there's also a battery included. These batteries aren't cheap, by the way. I did also pick up an extra one right here. This ran me about 200 bucks. But these battery last just about 20 minutes, which is about the average for these types of drones. Um, this is the Professional, which is one that shoots 4K as opposed to 2K. And there's a three axis gimbal. From what I've seen, the quality on this is great. It doesn't have the fisheye effect that you see from the GoPros. I almost actually bought a Phantom 2, but I'm pretty glad I waited. And I did get a pretty good deal on this. It was an open box, but it has never been flown before. So there's the drone itself. Let's just set that aside. Next up is the controller, which is the same controller found on the Inspire 1. The controller itself has a nice stand to it and um, it makes it very convenient to fly. You have a holder for your tablet or smartphone. In my case, I'm going to be using the iPad mini um, and there's just your little joysticks, which are very nimble. I'm gonna have to learn how to fly this. Um, there's your return to home button, which is great, especially for amateurs. There's a power button and just some commands on the back. There's the um, record button, the movement switch, some little things here and there. And of course you have two antennas. But the way this works is you use the DJI Go app and there is a USB port which plugs directly into your iPad or smartphone or Android device you may have. And yeah, so here's the controller itself. Looks pretty nice. Setting that side once again, you've got your propellers, which we're gonna put on in a second. In here, you're gonna find your charger. And like I mentioned, the battery does last 20 minutes. Um, the charger itself has two components. One piece goes to the um, controller and one piece goes to the actual battery itself. And I definitely recommend picking up a spare one and the last thing is just some accessories. Um, it does come with a spare set of stickers as well as some pieces for your gimbal itself. So let's just set this box aside and get these propellers on. As you can see, the drone itself looks beautiful, by the way. Um, yeah. So for the propellers, it does tell you to tighten before flying. There is also the option to get some carbon fiber ones, which I haven't actually bought yet, but I do have some propeller guards coming, which will hopefully help lessen the damage of things I run into. I think that's how you tighten. And they also come with a spare set of propellers as well. I'm not sure what color is supposed to go with what, but just slapping this on to show you guys what it looks like. But yeah, here's a look at the drone itself with the propellers on. Let's give you guys a quick 360 view. I think the white and gold color combo looks great. 
I know it doesn't really matter because it's a flying object, but yeah, let's go ahead and take this outside and give you guys some sample shots. But before we head out, let's take a look at our sponsor, Full Sail University. If you're thinking of a career in tech or got an idea for a cool new app, a huge demand exists for skilled tech professionals in virtually every industry today. Full Sail University offers bachelor's degrees programs with curriculum that blends code and theory with real world experience. The software development program is offered on campus, while mobile development and web design and development are offered both online and on campus. As a student, you have hands-on access to technology from day one, and you receive a laptop computer at an institutional discount, along with relevant software and tools. To learn more about Full Sail's degree programs, click on the link in the description below. So now we're outside and flying the drone for the very first time as you can see here. But if you would like to skip to the part where the drone kind of crashed itself, that is at the 8 minute and 20 second mark. But I hope you enjoy the footage. So the first few flight went great. I had a lot of fun with the drone, but in that same first day, just before sunset, I thought I'd take it for a quick little flight. During that entire day, I never opened the instructions once or looked at how to use this thing. I just figured it was easy to fly. So I sent it into the air and just flew it pretty far right over an entire mountain and it just lost connection. And I quickly tried to press the back to home button, but the drone had just lost signal and I was hoping it would come back, but it never did. By the time I drove to the location where the arrow supposedly was, it was completely pitch black out and it turns out the drone was pretty much in the air and just landed in the middle of a mountain in the bushes. Luckily after hours of weaving around in the mountain, I was able to get signal with the drone and was pretty close to it but it was nowhere to be seen. But after looking through some of the video footage as I was near it, I was able to have a reference point by seeing the back of the apartment as the drone was falling out of the sky as you can see here. The gimbal was stuck and the drone wouldn't move at all, so I ended up waiting till the next morning when it was bright out at about 7 in the morning because it was due to rain in the morning. Climbed up into the back area of that apartment on the side of a mountain and my assistant went up about 25 meters into the bushes and ended up finding it. So Jake just found the drone, <laughs> went up the side of the mountain. <laughs> First of all, I quit. How was that? <laughs> <laughs>
but as soon as taking the drone back home again, we agreed that it would be a great idea to try to fly the drone inside the small little office we have. Without looking at any of the instructions of how to fly inside, you're supposed to like turn off the GPS apparently, we just sent it into the air and it kind of spun out of control, took out a chunk of our wall, and also cut the assistant. Pretty much because I couldn't figure out how to land it and kept hitting the return to home button for some reason, which I forgot flies the drone to 30 meters in the air and tries to pick its initial spot. So all in all, I guess that wasn't the best idea. Do it. Okay, bring it down. So as you can see from my Twitter feed here, the first 24 hours of the drone made for some pretty interesting and hilarious tweets. So if you don't follow me already, be sure you do. So that's pretty much my first 24 hours with the drone in a nutshell. First of all, I wasn't sure if I was ever gonna find that thing after it got lost, but I definitely learned my lesson and I'm probably gonna be a little bit more careful from now on. At least I'll try to be. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button if you would also like to see some more drone videos in the future and I'll see you all in the next video.